Hi, welcome to Curriculum Night. I am Jacqueline Reske. And I'm Kristen Pumford. And we are going to briefly go over what our classroom setup is. So um, on the first screen that we are sharing, it gives you guys our email. We also have sent home um, a syllabus that have, most students have sent back and hopefully you guys were able to review that. And this is a picture of me and, and my two kids. I have a son who's 10 and his name is Ricky and a daughter, Raylan, and um, she is nine and he is 10. And I'm Mrs. Pumford and that's my family there. And we've been teaching together at Wald Lake for seven years now. Um, and we've both been in the district and teaching a lot longer than that, but that's kind of our track, rec our track record together. And we've been teaching pre-algebra and algebra together. And so we are looking forward to another school year with your students. Um, in our classroom, we've really designed our classroom to be a safe space for students. We know that math historically is really challenging. Um, so we welcome just the growth and the learning um, in our class though, to help students who do struggle uh, focus on the algebraic portion, we really strongly recommend a calculator. Um, we do not let them use their cell phones as calculators. As you know, that's a really easy distraction and we try to limit those. So the calculator that we strongly recommend is this TI-30. Um, we recommend it just one because we find it to be the easiest to use. It has all the features um, and it's inexpensive. So it's between, I would say 10 to 15 at most, but usually you can get them much cheaper than 15. And um, yeah, anything you wanna add about calculators? No, just that it's important, like Ms. Resky said, to get one um, when it comes to a chapter assessment, we won't allow cell phones. So while some kids get by with the cell phone as we go with the practice and the in-class stuff, when we get to test day, um, they'll have to put that away. So we need them to have a calculator that they can use. Uh, if you look at the class policies and procedures here, you see a picture of the calculator we suggest. Um, again, like Ms. Resky said, it's about $10. You also see the links to the Google Classroom. Um, if your student's in third hour, uh, the links there as well as the fifth hour code, we strongly suggest that you um, sign up for that class as a parent so that you have access to it. We are using Google Classroom um, as a means of, if you're absent, you can go there. We post a guide every day. Basically, it's like a lesson plan of what we did. Uh, it says the warm up, maybe the notes we did, whatever activities we did, and then the homework. So if you're absent, that's a great place to go pull that up so that you're not getting behind, especially if you're out for a lot of days at a time. Uh, the other thing is, is that we use that for homework submission. So rather than spending class time and walking around and checking in the homework, we have students go ahead and turn it into Google Classroom so that we can do that at a separate time. And then when we get into class, we can go ahead and just start with homework questions and the warm up and get right into the curriculum that we're working on. Uh, so we do use the Google Classroom. We do grade inside the Google mm -hmm. Classroom. And so if you're looking for your students grade. That's why we suggest that you maybe sign up as a parent. You can go there and look at grades. We will sync it to Skyward. So Skyward will be updated, but we probably only will be committed to doing that once a week on Fridays. So Google Classroom will be up to date more often, whereas Skyward will be done once a week on Fridays. So make sure you sign up for that as a parent uh, so you have access to your students grade um, that's much more up to date than what the Skyward would be. And honestly, I know that sometimes Google Classroom um, can be a little bit intimidating. Your son or daughter can help you navigate it. And if you look, you can see everything we see. So that it truly is our go-to spot. So if, if we had a substitute, everything's there. Like, so it's a really good resource to get comfortable with. With that being said, um, we do have some laptops and Chromebooks in our classroom that kids could use. So it's not necessary that they bring their own. However, we strongly suggest that if they do have a laptop or a Chromebook, they go ahead and bring it with them. A lot of teachers are continuing to use the Google Classroom, so they might need it for other classes. 
Additionally, our book is online and is very user friendly on, um, on the online book. There's mm -hmm. a homework help section that the kids can click on. Um, and it, rather than lugging around a huge book, when they have six of those, um, they can just bring their laptop and it's much easier than lugging around that big book. So we do suggest a laptop or a Chromebook if you have one. Again, we do have some in the class that they can use, just not enough for everybody. Uh, they can also use their phone for that. Google Classroom works on their phone. The CPM book works on their phone. It's just the wireless sometimes in our room specifically isn't the best. And so connecting it onto their phone is hard, whereas the laptops and Chromebook are, are set up to use it. And so they get much better service on those than on their phone. So again, that's just kind of our recommendation. Um, you can reach out to us, obviously, if you have questions regarding the laptop Chromebook usage. With grading, 85% um, of the points in this class are based on the assessments. So formative and summative assessments. Um, and then 15% is uh, based on their practice. So we use the word practice instead of homework because generally we give time in class for them to practice what will be on the test. And if they don't finish it in class, then it is homework. So when you see practice, just know that's your in class and slash go home work. Um, that 85% is on assessments. Uh, we will accept all late work up until um, the assessment of that chapter. So right now we're in chapter one. And when we take that assessment at the end, we won't accept any more work from unit one. Then when we move into two, then they can focus on that. So just to make sure that you guys are aware and the students are aware that get it in before the end of the unit. Um, we do in our Google Classroom, we posted our syllabus. We also gave your student a hard copy. So they have that. Um, and that way, if you have any further questions, you can read through that first. And then you can always email us if you have any questions or concerns. Obviously, we know this is just a glimpse of kind of the classroom. Um, in terms of like organization, we don't require a binder, but we strongly, 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 strongly recommend just one spiral notebook that's just dedicated to math and then a folder, calculator and something to write with and we're good to go. So everything's done right in the notebook. They don't need a binder or anything like that. Um, but it becomes hard if they try and shove science, English, everything in there. So make sure we just have that one notebook. A little bit about the math vision here in Wald Lake. Um, the Wald Lake Consolidated Schools math program is big on collaborative learning where the students are engaged with one another um, just to promote that higher order thinking, the communication skills, um, everything that, um, you know, they work together as groups. It's really group based. Um, and us teachers become a facilitator uh, to keep them moving. And at first it can be cumbersome because it's new and it makes students a little bit uncomfortable to have to speak up within their group. Um, this is our third, fourth year with CPM. Year. Yep. And I will say the first year was a learning curve, but each year we've, we've watched students grow in ways that we historically haven't. So there's definitely some beautiful things that come from this program. Yep. So that program is CPM. Um, and just like we were saying, it just offers a more student-centered learning um, where they are engaged and they're active um, and that they work with one another. It's not the traditional notes from the teacher up on the board, although there are times where we do insert some notes and things like that where we feel we need a little bit more support. Um, but it's much more hands-on. There's labs that they do. Um, you know, they do a lot of, a lot more um, interacting with one another as opposed to just sitting in their seats and listening to us. Mm -hmm. So that last sentence there on this slide, mathematics is more than just an answer. A lot of this program, they, it's, a, it's a why, like an explain yourself as opposed to just an X equals answer. Another thing uh, students really struggle with, but in the end we see the growth. When they ask us a question, our first response is, have you asked your group mates? It's not that we don't want to help them, it's we want them to learn those skills of 
what can I do to solve this? Who can I ask? How can I get my group members involved? And then, yes, we will facilitate and help and guide, but we want them exhausting their options to learn that independence as well. Um, and so just their best practices are that, you know, students engage with standards for the mathematic practices daily and that they, um, it helps them to read, communicate and solve those problems mathematically. CPM is heavy on reading. Um, and so, you know, a lot of times we read together as a class, they read together as a group or they might read independently. So we do all three different ways uh, to make sure that we're all on the same page in terms of what we're doing. The three pillars of CPM are collaboration, problem solving, and mixed space practice. So with collaboration, obviously the students work together to investigate the patterns, properties, and relationships. They're just like we've been saying, they're very active in their learning, they're hands-on. Um, they have conversations with one another, like Ms. Resky said, before they pull us over to see if somebody in their group can't clarify, or maybe somebody has a different idea than what you have. Um, and you might be sitting there saying like, wait, I don't think my kid can do that. You know, they're really shy. They're really timid. You'd be surprised at how much they start engaging with their groups and um, just, you know, they develop actually that communication piece that you might think they're more timid about. So it is fun as teachers to see that growth happen with them. Yes, the school year, we all start timid, but we, we do get there. The next is problem solving. One thing this program does an excellent job is pulling in real life scenarios that make the kids think deeper. Um, so there's data, there's different ways that it's given, they're going to have to investigate. Sometimes we give questions that we know might be a little bit too challenging for the majority of the students, but it gets them thinking and opening their brain up. Um, we have students start to look and evaluate if there's patterns and um, develop different ways to solve the problems. And then again, the students work together and are guided by the teachers to develop different strategies. Um, yeah. um, and then that final pillar, the mixed space practice. Uh, CPM is really big on spiraling. So something we learn in chapter one is going to be still assessed on chapter eight when we get there. So per, certain percentage of each chapter assessment is old material and a certain percentage is new material. And so even though we learn it in chapter one, the kids can't learn it and forget it, right? They still use it and the program builds. So they have multiple opportunities throughout the program to demonstrate their learning um, and their growth, right? Maybe they didn't get it in chapter one, but now they're getting it. Here we are in chapter six and they have this aha moment and they're, and they're getting it. So it continues as we go. Um, we don't learn and forget it. We keep using it. It helps to deepen their um, retention of the concepts as well, because they just keep seeing it. So obviously CPM is big on these cooperative groups, and we've talked about this quite a bit already, but just what cooperative groups are for us in our classroom is sharing and critiquing ideas and working as a team, right? It's not just one person doing all the work and then being like, here's the answer, and then somebody else cops, copies it. Mm -hmm. um, they, we try and keep them all together on the same page. And that's something that's quite a bit of a learning curve. Uh, they are used to, you know, perhaps one person doing the work and then they share and that kind of thing, whereas they need to stay together and come to conclusions um, as a team rather as just one person doing all the work. And with that, sometimes there are groups, right, where one student's doing all the work. And that's where we're really working with the students to communicate and advocate for themselves in an appropriate way. So. If your son or daughter has concerns, one, we do rotate the group so they won't be stuck there. Um, but two, encourage them to come and have an honest conversation with us at an appropriate time because we're always open to hear and we want to make sure everyone's comfortable in the class. So when we're walking around the classroom facilitating the groups, these are just some things we're looking for, just that um, they're actively contributing they're completing, or like we said, at least attempting the problems, perhaps it's too challenging, but if we're, we're working through it together, that's good on our part. Uh, we're checking things out, correcting problems on assignments, asking for help when, needing, when needed, attempting to provide help to other students, taking notes and keeping that notebook organized, and then make sure you're not distracting other students. And on our end, um, this was a learning curve for us. We are circulating the classroom, observing. We're trying to let them lead their groups. 
we're asking questions to students to get them thinking, not just providing knowledge, we're, we're trying to get them to pull out that knowledge. Um, we're addressing misconceptions and guiding gently to try to facilitate the group to find that solution. Um, we're working as a partner to the students, not necessarily as a teacher student role. We're trying to be, um, when it comes to presenting, we're trying to be at their level. We're monitor monitoring, we're modeling, and we're facilitating class discussions. So a lot, it, this was a learning curve for us, learning the questions to ask, mm -hmm. um, to always be moving around the classroom. So at first it was a big adjustment, but now we find that, you know, when we take on these roles, it really helps the students. Um, as a parent, you do have some supports yourself. First, um, there is a parent guide that you can use to see what lessons we're doing. They give you example problems, those kind of things. There's also the homework help that is on the, the book, the online book, where you or your student can go and it gives hints in terms of how to solve the problem. So it might give you step one, and then it says, now for your next step, try this. And it kind of gives them some guides. So if they're really stuck, it gives them a point to go and start so that they can complete something for their homework. And oftentimes there's a, let's say it's problem uh, 1-45, right? It's one problem, but there's an A, B, C portion. And you'll find sometimes that A will give a ton of help, like step one, step two, and then even the answer. Mm -hmm. Now B, it kind of lessens and C maybe just gives you one or two steps. So as a parent, I know when I come to a new concept, it's frustrating that it, one, we may be teaching it different. Maybe you haven't touched it in years. When you look at those steps, sometimes it helps as the parent and the student to figure out, okay, if I start here, this is my next step. So definitely encourage your students to use that homework help tab and take a look at it yourself. With that being said, because some of them do give answers, we have told the students this. So we grade their homework on a, a scale of zero to five, five being the most you can get for doing it we need to see work. So if you just come in and there's just answers on your homework, we won't give you credit for it. You can obviously redo it and resubmit and we'll give you credit. But if it's just answers, we're gonna put a zero in until you show us some work. Uh, this is the Algebra One content. Uh, last year, we made it through chapter eight. We'll see where we get this year um, now that we are back fully face-to-face. -face. So. We will link this PowerPoint to our classroom and Google so that you can have access to this in case you wanted to click on any of the links um, or just visit any of the slides because we know this was kind of fast. So as always, if you have any questions or concerns, please reach out to us. Email is honestly the best just because we get to it faster. If you prefer a phone call, you can always just say, please call me in the email that works too. Uh, we look forward to working with your student. And we're so happy to see their faces in the classroom. Absolutely. <laughs> Have a good night. Bye-bye.